Do you have those calculations on the plot here? Or not? Yep. Yep. It's that. It's, yeah. It's, um, okay. Uh, it's all in there. And so we're yeah we're talking about um, yeah you know, the thirteen hundred percent of you know seven hundred percent of what's required. Um, the uh, and we did we did um, we dug a test pit on the lower lot um, since that's there, there isn't a um, the upper portion has an existing approved septic system um, the lower portion doesn't um, but we did the test pit and the test pit results were very good um, so there's we have um, we have no doubt that we can get it. Um, Minimum four bedroom septic design on the, the lower portion. Um, so, the, I'm sorry. Um, I wasn't at the last time I was meeting with okay. Neither was Scott. Um, so, the, so the, the lot lines here, now these are the butters? Those are butters. So, the. You have the existing name? That is. Down there, and so there is no frontage on switchback. The frontage, um, the frontage on switchback is up in the upper portion. Um, so that's where the, the driveway is for the, the existing um, oh, this house. Yep, yeah, correct. So that, that actually has um, uh, about 53 feet of frontage on switchback. And that's this one piece. Correct. Yeah. But this one does not. <clears throat> that one does not. So, and, and just to sort of cut to the, the crux <clears throat> of the issue, um, was it was and is the issue of frontage for the lower portion. Um, well, there's a frontage issue here, too. In what way? It, it's non-conforming. But it's pre-existing. Right, right. Right, so there, there would be a waiver request given that that frontage <coughs> is pre-existing, that is what it is, that is what the lot has had. Um, there are no changes uh, proposed, no additional development, um, nothing, hap nothing happening on, again, what I'm going to call the other portion. Uh, it, so essentially, and I'll, I'm, I'm trying not to call Cynthia out if, if I don't have to, but um, basically it's, um, the intent is to s just split the lot in half um, both lots will will remain within the family, but under um, they would end up under separate ownership, still within the family. Um, and the intent uh, would be, I uh, believe, for Cynthia's parents to, um, at some point, um, build a house on the lower lot. Um, it, it, it's got an existing uh, existing cabin there, um, and whether they want to utilize any of that or um, build something different, um, but that's that's it. So it's the the one house that exists that that is the proposed or, or that there there is no proposed development for the upper um, you know, eighteen and a half acres, and the only uh, proposed development on the lower portion is whenever some of his parents um, decide to build something out there for themselves. So it's not, and um, to give a little bit more information, um, the, again, the, the, the A-frame has existed for 20 plus years, since the 80s, mm -hmm. since the 80s. So it's been there for quite a while. Um, always accessed off of Stem Turn Hill Road. Stem Turn Hill Road is what the town of Jackson considers that roadway to be. Is um, that a town road? Or is that it's a not a town road, it's a private road. It's a private road. road. It's a private road. Um, town is a plow. I don't believe it's a town, no. Town, town doesn't plow. No. no, they do no maintenance in there at all. Right. Um, so uh, my understanding is, is that the wayers actually built the road, and the majority of it is on their land, um, not just a, a, you know, it's not a right of way over their land. They actually own the road for essentially the entirety of it. Um, they grant others uh, easement to use it, 
and, and it is being used for um, several, I, I believe they're uh, coming off of Switchback. Um, I believe there's seven or eight. Is that um, deeded? Yes. Yes. It, it, yep. All, all the access is, is deeded. It's all, um, yeah, it's all recorded deeds. It's all, uh, it's all legit. Um, so, could, could you reiterate exactly what the, uh, the problem was at the last meeting and how this addresses that? So, the problem, one of the problems was um, created by, or, or was uh, exacerbated by my, um, my test on the plan where I had, um, instead of referring to Stem Turn Hill Road as Stem Turn Hill Road, I had it listed as the existing driveway. Um, it should have been existing travel way, existing roadway, any any other um, things that I could have called it, I think would have um, better. Would, would, would have yeah, would have been would have been good. Um, so what it is though, I mean it, it is stem turn hill road. That's if um, and I did so so leaving leaving the meeting last time, we all had a little bit of homework. Uh, and so my homework was to go back through all all the information that I had, all the needs that I had, um, other plans that I had, town um, town tax cards, tax information, um, that that all of the houses that are, that are accessed off of Stem Turn Hill Road have Stem Turn Hill Road as their address. So, um, and, and these are things that I, you know, it, you know it, it, uh, I'm, I'm not perfect. In hindsight, I wish I had it listed as Stem Turn Hill Road. Well, it, for last I don't think it really matters what, what it's called. It, it really matters just what, you know, what the condition of the road is in as far as front is concerned. Yes, no, no, I, I, I agree. I think it just, um, I think I, I aided to the confusion. Um, and so part of the, um, part of the revision that occurred was to straighten that out and also to um, uh, list snow plow turn road as well um, on there. So by all um, by all appearances, based upon the development uh, off of Stem Turn Hill Road and uh, Snow Plow Turn Road as well. Um, they, by all appearances, they are treated as roads as opposed to a driveway accessing two units and two units only. Um, is snowplow turn? Oh, it's here. It is. Yep. Um, and there is, there's also, um, you know, again, and, and some of my going back over, um, you know, looking, looking more deeply and looking with a little bit of a different perspective on some of the uh, existing information that we had. Uh, there's a there's a boundary line adjustment plan um, done by HED back in 2001, um, but it doesn't it in part involves the use of Stem Turn Hill Road as uh, as an act, as the road to access um, one of the one of the existing houses and extinguishing its previous access, uh, which came across other properties off of, um, off of Switchback. So it, this, this was approved by, you know, approved by the planning board, not this board, but um, they discontinued an access that was not on Stem Turn Hill Road and made the only access to one of these existing houses <coughs> via Stem Turn Hill Road, which, as I said, 2001, um, Certainly, zoning was in effect then, and it, it's just um, additional uh, additional information, additional evidence to support the what I think is, is the fact that um, the town has considered Stem Turn Hill Road a road. Again, certainly, it's not it's not a, a town road. We know it's not to, to today's town spec. Um, not all town roads and town tracks are actually spaced. In fact, I think we all know that. Um, I think everybody has been up and down that road by now, um, probably. Uh, it's, it's in very good condition. Um, 
you know, we established in our discussion last month that um, you can pass, you know, a, a opposing directions. You can have two cars that pass each other. Um, and one one of the other things, uh, just to, to to point out, is again that there's no the the action by this board, hopefully, to approve the subdivision isn't isn't by that action approving any further development on any of the property that doesn't have a right to uh, to that development already. Meaning the wingers already have a right to they could they could build a, a, a house down on this lower portion, access it via Stem Turn Hill Road, and that would be well within uh, the the zoning requirements for the town of Jackson. Um, so, it, and something I know that was, that was one of the things that came up was potentially opening the door to further development on a road that's not uh, no, it's not town spec, and we don't want you know we don't want to increase um, we don't want we don't want to look to increase the use of roads that maybe aren't aren't built to um, to handle. A, 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 a significant increase in use, um, which is understandable. That's part of the point of a good plan. Uh, nothing, nothing would change by this action um, as far as allowing for development on this property. Uh, so really, all that all that is, and all that the mayors are looking for is to s split up the is to split up the ownership. So that again, not, not to be, not to talk too much for the future, but so that they they can they can have things squared away for their children, mm -hmm. um, and not leave a situation that's potentially problematic down the line. So that's that's what we're looking at. Um, so, so my opinion is that it's very straightforward that to do the subdivision there needs to be frontage, and that road appears to be the only possibility for frontage. Is that correct? And so we have town road standards that qualify a road for frontage or not. And I think either meets those standards or it has to be brought up to those standards. Do we have standards for private roads? Okay, I did some homework that I was supposed to do. And, and uh, walked it with Jay Henry, the fire chief. And uh, he has no problem for uh, bringing emergency vehicles into that section. He said there's enough of a uh, hammerhead or cul-de-sac up at the end so you can turn. So he had no problem. I talked to the road agent, and uh, he doesn't plow that, but he walked it, and it's, in, it's as good a road as many of the private roads in town. It's in fine shape. Um, as far as it's never been designated because there was never a, an approved uh, subdivision in there because some of the original homes were before zoning. I know two of the Petty March log cabins or wait for something. Um, I don't, I didn't find out when uh, Peggy Frost's house was built, but it was quite a while ago. I mean, so what I'm saying is it's been accepted as a private road because of the other homes on it. Um, I know Rodney Charles had a home in there and uh, Harmon had one, and Chase still has one. Anyway, there's been enough uh, development along the road to establish it as a private road. So there's no issue uh, with anybody in the other departments of town with the road. I don't see any harm. I, in the future, Whatever we, we never know what's going to happen in the future. But the future would have to come back here anyway. Absolutely. But in the past, we've you know we've had situations like this where 
and we used uh, Burke Phillips to assess the road, and we've taken a performance bond if the road wasn't already to, to send it. I think we have to be consistent with the way we've handled it in the past. I don't think it will walk down the road. Well, by the road agent is consistent. They've got a pretty good idea when they look at a road whether it's going to hold up for uh, mm -hmm. the track. I, 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 and also, and, there, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <coughs> denying that. It's just, I would say, I think, that, I, think I guess my feeling is that we need to be consistent with how we've done it before. Otherwise, the people that we've put through a different process. You know, have caused a challenge. You're not asking the town to take the road. If they ever ask the town to take the road, I would say that, you know, it would have to be a town spec road. Right. Is there a process for um, as accepting uh, a private road? Because the definition of frontage says. Um, means the width of a lot measured along its common boundary with a class five or better public road or planning board approved private road right of way. So that means that we would have to approve it as a private road right of way. And have we ever done that before? We've not done that before as far as I'm aware. Um, no, we've taken the performance bond before to bring roads to that standard. So we have yeah. required that roads be improved to qualify. I think that's past the way. Then we do that with the Davis. Either improved to or inspected as. It's now, it's now, that's not Now, that if I, if, if, if I'm thinking of the, like, Grover Road, that we're up the Grover Road was a newly was constructed road and exactly. we're putting it in. We were at the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. So we could require those specs. We're still looking to require the paving of it for them to go on. But that's another issue. That's that's back at the... Uh, yeah, we're trying to get to a yes here. In trying to get to a yes here, it seems to be a matter of trying to figure out which hoops we got to jump through here. And I think to the point is, is that everything I read, including the stuff from the New Hampshire Municipal Association, our own regulations, and also I think what you're trying to accomplish as well, uh, and I think what Scott has just referenced is, is that um, we are trying to get a, a, a frontage on a, a piece of a road, which is there. We, we all know it's there. And it's paved, it, it, we walked it, it, but what hasn't happened, it doesn't seem, is that it is neither a town road, um, it is not a, uh, a class five approved road by the town, and uh, it has really no official status with, uh, with the town. It has deeds that are ancient, that all allow for access for each, needed or otherwise, and that's all of it. Um, but it seems the hoop we need to jump through is, is that uh, we need to meet the requirements of something called RSA 674.41-A, and that requires that that either be approved by the town as a class five road or better. And that's not happened yet. So what do we do with the existing homes in there? There's do nothing we, we have nothing to do. They, not, none of those folks have asked us for any action or actionable thing, and they still have access from a deeded perspective. Those are rights of way. Those have nothing to do with quote unquote grow that's been approved by the town. The town has a facility to do that. So we can do that. What 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 exactly does that involve? Well, according to this, it either meets the requirements and is accepted, or it needs to go before a town meeting. Uh, well, well, who makes that? A town, a town meeting would be for the town to take the road. Right. right. The one town meeting the, yeah. for, for yeah. one or the other. Right. Right. Well, I think what's before us is, is the planning board can accept it as a private road. 
in regards to providing frontage for the, the subdivision. But in doing so, I think the, the planning board needs to be assured that it meets private road standard and you know, town private road standard. Well, who, who, who does that? Who, who well, actually it has Burgos? The, the, town, the town does that. We, 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 the planning board has yeah, no facility that Burgos is a town engineer. And so in the past, like the road road, we used for Phillips to ensure that that road can, was considered a new road, so we need to attempt to ensure that it was constructed to the standards that were expected. Well, then doesn't it make sense to have him do that? that, that, that that's my argument. I'm, I don't know if there's any reason to believe that the road doesn't meet town standards. I'm just saying that in the past, that's the litmus test that we've, I think, we've used. I mean, sorry about that. No. Do, you, do you have any objection? Do they do, do they have any objection to, to having that done? Uh, well, my, I who pays for it? Who pays for it? Now do you go back and you ask the people that bought Peggy Frost House to spring for that part of the road and have uh, the wires uh, bring it up and then have Chase to, and I don't know who else is out there. Do you now, after the fact, uh, ask them to do that? Well, I think it's because of that situation that you try to become more proactive. Um, because if you find a situation where a road you know, serves a variety of homes and you know, isn't, it, either it wasn't the standards to begin with or it's falling apart and no one's keeping it the standard, and there is no way to you know, know one person that can be accountable. And so, you know, so it would be, if the road needed to be brought out to standards to satisfy frontage requirements, you know, either the property owner and the student subdivision could take that on if it was worth it, or they could certainly talk to the other property owners that that road serves and see if there's any collective interest in bringing the road up to a better standard. Yeah. But, it, but to, to have this person, this engineer, look at it, it would seem to me that that would the town would pay for that. For this, why would if I, I don't know? Yeah, according to, I'll, I'll, let me, I'll let me read directly from the New Hampshire Municipal Association's reference to your question that you asked specifically around the existing homeowners and the effects and. To your point about what you do, I think I'm sure. Certainly, it would be unfair for the landowner to bear the entire cost of upgrading Sam Terminal Road's Class Five status. In circumstances similar to this, in other municipalities where the other homeowners are in agreement, a petition could be brought to the Select Board to conditionally lay out Sam Turnhill Road as a Class Five road, with all of the abutters jointly sharing the cost of upgrading the road through betterment assessments. Uh, and that would be accomplished on the provisions of RSA 231, uh, colon 28. Uh, so there, this is not new, new, new science we're trying to create here. <laughs> there are other instances where this has happened and <clears throat> where the, the requirements of both the RSAs in town can be met, but there are things that need to occur to get from where we are to where we need to be before we can say yes. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, that, that mentioned bringing a road to class five status. That's correct. The class class five is a town road, correct? Mm -hmm. And there's no there's there's zero request uh, for the town of Jackson ever to accept Stem Turner Road as a town road. Right. And I, I think the class five, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is that talking about building permit? Okay. Yeah. As for class five. So there's a difference between class five road and private road. Right. Right. So our regulations say that, that to provide frontage it can either be a class five or, or, or other yeah. town road or it can be a private right way um, as approved by the planning board. So Section 21 of our road standards entitled private roads, which was uh, adopted in 2006, says 
Private roads shall conform to all aspects of these standards since it is believed by the board that the residents served by private roads as taxpayers are entitled to the same quality as a town accepted road. Further, the taxpayers may petition the road, the town to accept a private road. That's what's in the road standards. So it's. It, so is that, that, I'm sorry, sir, is that the equivalent then of a class five? Are you understanding it that way? That will, if the uh, road standards, the previous 15 pages of this, um, if it, that's what it's referring to. There's the, the uh, requirements for a uh, town, for a road to be accepted by the town, as a town road. So, and and I, I think there's no uh, argument with that. Uh, it would just be a, a clarification that that is, those those are town spec regular, you know, but that's to build a road to town spec. Which, if it were, if, if, like, like your road, if it were a new road to a new subdivision, a newly, um, you know, to 10 lots or 4 lots or whatever, um, that new road would absolutely have to meet today's town spec. Right, but, uh, but that's not, but this that's is, not the case. This is a new subdivision, and if we were to, to allow this road to provide frontage for this subdivision and it doesn't meet town standards, then we would then need to allow all of the other properties that are about that road to do the same thing if there's enough frontage for them to do that. I don't think that. Well, so what has to be brought to town the area in front of that property? Yeah, I would think that at least 200 feet on the road you know, the first 200 feet is how it brought to, you know, the, if, if the first 200 feet that, that is being used as frontage for the subdivision was brought to town standard, I, don't, I guess I, I don't technically see, and that'd be a legal question, but obviously the whole one would need to be brought to Well, I, certainly they're not going to, you know, spring for the money. Unless they're the property. So, I'm just yeah. trying to figure out what we would accept, so can we get for Phelps to go in there and, and try to get a cross section of, I mean, you've got years and years of gravel that's going in there. It's a good, you know, there's drainage, there's good roadbed. So if we establish that mm -hmm. with the town engineer, is that acceptable? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not questioning whether the road meets any particular standard. And just from this discussion, I seen, you know, after the last meeting, that seemed to be a question. And so, in the past, I think we've used, used Burr Phillips when there's been mm -hmm. no standard question. And I guess it's just like, my thought was that we need to be consistent. At least we just do that. Well, I, I don't, you don't want to do that? One, I, I um, so, yeah, I, I, I have two thoughts on that. One, one being, I'm, I don't want to be up here giving away my client's money because I, I think any kind of engineering review they're going to have to pay for. It. The town's not going to pay for it. I don't. I, I, I don't. I could be wrong, but um, I don't see why if the town is is looking into it that the town wouldn't pay for it. I don't, I don't quite understand that. I pay for I'm sure looking I'm into it or yes. pay for no, not pay for fixing the road, but but if we have a if, if we have a town. Have, have a question of whether this uh, meets standards, I think that the town should pay for it. The, the, you, 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 the we, we usually build, no, you need to understand, we usually build uh, uh, individuals for town services here in town 100% of the time. That's because these guys have a very tight budget. That doesn't sound correct to me. Well, yeah, sure. it might not hurt that for sure. Okay, but but it we should do that. Well, if, if it's a question the town has, I don't see why that burden should be placed on anybody but the town. I, because I someone, someone's applying for us to make a change. And but it's whatever the custom is. I don't know what the custom is. Well, I don't either. I just, I'm, I'm just. So I'm you're not coming to yeah, it's, it's either a fact we do or we don't. Right. Let's not argue that. No, I, I, I just say let's find out. Do we have to prove it? 
And do they have to prove it to us, or do we have to prove it? Don't do any processes. I, I see exactly where you're coming from. Well, we're just we're just assessing what the road is. We're not no. proving anything. I think I think the you know the wingers could bring their own engineering assessment if they prefer to do that as opposed to you know Burr. And I think we still have Burr look at that information mm -hmm. and assessment, but we I don't know that we send Burr out at that point to do the same thing again. But I I empathize with your point of not having this set of precedent. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you there. We can't do something that's going to come back and bite us at some other, you know, we're trying to uh, do the right thing here, but if that comes and sets a precedent. Just to be transparent, as part of the housing initiative, one thing that I would like to do is to give the board the ability to look at situations like this and say, okay, well, if this subdivision is going to lead to some affordable housing, then maybe we could. Right, we could turn that A frame into something. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. um, before, uh, before we get, I'm sorry. Uh, just, and, and, and I appreciate your, your advocacy. Um, it seems to me that we have some sort of procedural activity that needs to occur here. And I'm not exactly sure what it is. I think Scott has a, a sense that we've gone through and had some sort of engineering assessment that needs to occur, that has not yet been done. We've done several of the things that would need to be done, which you have done. You've done the walk, and you've had a uh, road agent take a look at it from his perspective. You've had the, uh, the fire chief look at it from his perspective. And I think those are things that are you know, we're plus marks. We've got, mm -hmm. we have, but it also seems, if I'm hearing Scott correctly, that we've got at least one more hurdle that needs to occur. Either that needs to happen before planning board can say, okay, or that the select board has to say, okay, one or the other. And it appears that if it's not going to be a town road, it may be something that does happen here, but it occurs as a result of making use of the town's resources to ensure that it meets the town requirement. Okay, and then uh, and another am I getting there right? Or avenue for this is would be will they will it cost less just to go to the CBA and say, you know, can we have a variance here? And the, and the ZBA has been uh, prone to helping. Uh, in situations that are just like this, you know. Again, we're not trying to say no. We're trying to say yes, but we're trying right. to make sure we we hit all the proper bells and whistles Absolutely. here to keep the town happy. Yep. Now, now I, I just if I could, I want to say advocate, um, but a little bit more information. Um, I don't. Every every application that comes before the planning board is unique. Planning board actually doesn't. Um, I don't believe planning board actually sets precedent in the sense that everything is unique and is looked at uniquely. Um, but that's what. That's just one thing. Um, the the sort of this, um, engineering review. The, this sort of thing is is who pays for it? Doesn't pay for it. That's you know a call for Phil. So would mm -hmm. would answer that. Um, but I would. I would encourage us to take a step back from that and look at things again. And one of you know the for qualifying frontage, it can be a class five or better town road, it can be a state road, or it can be a private road. This is a private road. It exists. We're not asking to create a new one. We're not asking for allowance to have any additional development. Uh, utilizing the road that already exists. So there's no, I, I, I'm, I believe that there's no there's no need to go to the step of seeing whether or not, whether or not the town spec uh, road as it is, um, what it would cost, who pays for it, what it would cost to bring it up to town spec. Um, to me, that's, uh, that's an, those are unnecessary steps. Um, and that it is 
it's, it's not a situation where we're asking for um, we're not asking for a waiver on frontage requirements along stem turn um, because it is an existing private road. It's an existing right of way. Everybody that utilizes it has deeded rights to use it. It exists. It, the, the, the rights um, in, in the town of Jackson for the miners to build another house down there exists. They have the right to access off of center. No, this action doesn't, doesn't change that. It doesn't create those rights. Those rights exist already. Um, all that this action does is split up the ownership of this 35-acre lot into two big lots. Um, I think we've had some discussion, and I think it would be perfectly reasonable to uh, have, have a statement on this plan that we've, we've done on any number of, of other um, subdivisions where it a clear statement that um, Stem Turn Hill Road uh, is not a town road, will not become a town road until such time as it may be um, re, you know, reconstructed to town spec. Um, no more development other than one um, dwelling unit on each lot until such time as things may change as far as zoning or um, or the road becomes the town spec road and then things things might change. But um, not to you know not to put too fine a point on it, but the splitting the lot into two doesn't doesn't create any different rights for development. Um, so uh, in the you know, in an effort to find a way to say yes, um, and that everybody can feel feel good about, it, not feel, not feel as though um, some, you know, again, I, I, I certainly would never want to push the board into doing something where I have any, you know, inclination that it's going to come back and, and, and bite them afterwards. Um, I think it's it is a unique situation. I mean, there. There certainly are plenty of non-conforming lots everywhere. You know, this is, this is the North Country here. But this is, there aren't many 35-acre lots in Jackson where uh, the subdivision that is being requested is just split lot and two. Um, and there's, again, there's no, we would have to, there would have to be 400 feet of frontage down here to do another subdivision down there. And Ooh, there is this one, isn't there? Um, yeah, that might be actually, but um, but that's I think it's I think it's, um, the family is I don't want to speak too much for them, but I think they they're okay with. Yeah, but we understand the, the, the ownership of the family is not any contentions or intentions, um, but we also have to take a look at it as if this were a corporation coming in or anybody else coming in. It, 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 I mean, it, it may cover our view, but it shouldn't cover our view. We need to look at how to what the requirements are from our regulations and the expectation that uh, transfer of ownership could occur moments after after approval. Um, so, but, but then that's that's a whole different ballgame. I, 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 I think this is a. It, actually, it's not a different ballgame. We have to we're required to meet our requirements <laughs> and not look at ownership. The, the, the ownership well, fine, but, but Bill, come up with definitive requirements that that they can either meet or not meet. What, what well, that, 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 that's, what, that's what we're asking. That's what we're asking. I think this is an extremely reasonable request. If ownership changes on the sale and somebody wants to do something else, that's then they're going to come back here and and, and that would be a future discussion exactly not, not the, but but that's you're, not before us but you're 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 throwing out a hypothetical no i'm not i'm saying it's not before us it's not something we should be addressing now well then what exactly should we we should be addressing, addressing the fact that we have no we do not understand properly the status of stem turn hill road oh. Then if, if that's actually what needs to be done, then we need to do that. Now, you're telling me that um, if, if somebody asks the town to do something, then they pay for it. That, that, that's not true. 
I mean, they've asked us to do it, and I don't see that I'm getting a paycheck for this. So, you know, I, I think how, we're, how it's been done in the past. Is well, well, let's find out. That, I mean, that, 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 that's, that's a, a fact. Why, why should we be arguing facts here? You're arguing facts. No, if we do you or we don't, I don't really care which it is. Well, I, I don't really care which it is. No, no, this is the second time they've been up here. I think we need to give them the exact hurdle that they need to if there is a hurdle that they need to go over, and I think we have just they said, they decide exactly what I think is. we have just said we need an engineering report then from fine. Bert Phillips that needs to occur. Okay, so that ahead. we can make a proper determination because that is what we have done previously. Okay. If I understand Scott correctly, that is it, it's been done before. That's what we've requested before. We should do the same thing again. Then, then, then we've done some of the work. Then let's I think we've done ninety percent of the work. Then let's and we have one more thing that needs to happen. And, and if that it. happens, then we can. And, and Burr says yep. And it's a yep. So oh, and um, if Burr says no, and if Burr says no, he has to say no with specifications that say why he's saying no and what the remedy would be. Well, uh, what what would be. I have no idea. No, 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 no. I, I don't. I don't mean what. What is he going to say needs to be done in the road? That's that's something different. Um, what is? Burr will either come back with a yes or no because it's a, it's a it's a yes or no question. Really, is it is it town spec? Is it not? Right. It's not. It's not I don't think there's any. I mean, it's, it's not going to be town spec. It's not the town spec. So why are we having to refer? Do, right. Why are we? What's the purpose of that step? Then? If, if we're, we're all pretty sure that it is not the town spec. It, it seems like a lot that size should be able to have a house on it some way. It seems like we could work with them somehow and make it make it work. Maybe the road should be able to have. It just seems like it should be possible somehow. Our problem is that we are bound by the rules. Well, then let's yeah. state the rule and let's... Yeah. I think we have. There's an RSA that we have. What we have to have is that a lot for us to approve a lot that has to go through these various steps. I assume that last time we went through the checklist. And um, then one of those steps is that it has to have frontage, and frontage is defined um, in the zoning ordinance, and I've read it before. Um, and in this case, it would be on a planning board approved private road right of way. So we have to decide what we need to be able to approve it as a, exactly. as a private road right of way. And if we need to be assured that it is a private road right of way uh, by having someone like Bert Phillips look at it, then let's do that and move on. Because once exactly. if we approve it as a private road right of way, they have their frontage. And if there aren't any other um, problems that they didn't meet with the, the checklist that we went through. There are no other issues with this idea except how we designate the road. Mm -hmm. Is there, a, I mean, does no, anyone have a good time Yeah, Kevin, because I, I discussed this with Kevin, and, and somehow he, was, he, he, he checked the back records, and that's how I found out that he was saying it's not a driveway, it, it is a private road. Yeah. Now, where did, he, where did he get that information? I should have asked him. Yeah. I mean, it was was kind of, yeah. That feels nice. That'd be good if it was used as frontage for any other subdivision. Well, then, how, how old are the lots that are there? I mean, how far back is that all the way back to the original? There's really only one other lot. That used stem turn road. That only had frontage on the road. There's a lot cabin. As you drive in, Right. Right. The house to the right. yeah. There's Donald Chase's on the left. Yeah. There's, there's, there's the lost property on the left. property line here. Yeah. That's got kind of continuous this way. So everybody knows like, this is the only property that has front and down the center. Or no road. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and these these folks back here have this. Uh, right. No, uh, yeah, not, not enough to do anything with it. Correct. I guess, you know, I, I'm not sure. There, there may not have ever been a subdivision where that road was used in that frontage. Well, I used to go, I'm sure there was nothing. Right. 
Yeah, I, I, I think the, the <laughs> lots in there were, were split up pre-zoning. I think, I think everything there is pre-zoning, so we, we are post-zoning, we have a requirement post-zoning. We need to meet the requirement post-zoning for this particular subdivision. And it seems like uh, uh, all we need to do is, is find out um, what we need to do to qualify this officially for the planning board purposes as private road. And if, if, if I'm hearing both Sarah and Scott correctly, um, and it, there's really two two possible developments that occur. If we if we use if we approve this road in frontage, then this property could be subdivided, and then this new property could also be subdivided. So for for the uh, so there, there's the potential of um, two additional lots on that road beyond what we do. Right uh, not not if um, not if a condition of this approval is that there is no, to be no further development on this parcel until such time as it's done turn the build road is upgraded to be town target town staff. So that's how you guys report to town road. Uh, private road built to, to current town staff, okay. which would be the requirement for any development. Is that possible? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We would put, I mean, we would put it right, just, just in, in the same way that um, a condition for approval could be that the private road being used is to remain private and is not to become a town's road. Um, so that's all, those are all things that are commonly done. Um, and is, like, for the future, any town road, uh, any private road that falls out of compliance with current standards, where, where would the town step in to require that? Yeah. You know, that's, we, well, the I'm just running these. Silent on that matter. Yeah, right. hmm? The zoning ordinance is silent on that matter. I'm not, though. Um, but it, there's, you know, so if, if we're trying to look down the road and not, you know, create something that's um, going to do us more harm than good, um, you know, wh when does that happen? What if that was a, a, a town spec private road at the time? Well, there, there are private roads that aren't just woods still. I mean, I, as Sarah said, we don't have any, there's no mechanism to ensure that a private road uh, that, you know, met a standard at one point continues to meet that standard in the future. And I also look at the idea that, like for a septic system, uh, if somebody puts in a, an auxiliary apartment, they do not have to build that septic system today to accommodate that. They have to have the room to create that system in the future when this one the fails. Is they that to, correct? They have to have the plans right. to accommodate that should there right. be a failure. I mean, I, I, again, I just I think that we have a frontage requirement you know, that, that sort of um, begs the question in terms of some sort of standard. I mean, how do you have a project requirement if you don't have a standard that you apply to? And, you know, so again, in my mind, the road either meets the standard or, or it doesn't. And, I, and I, again, I'd, I'd love to, for the planning board to have more ability to, to you know, offer variances in situations like this. And I believe the planning board does rest on precedent. It's the ZBA that's not a kind of precedent. If I understand, I might be wrong with that. Um, so, you know, again, and all what you say, you know, makes sense in terms of 
there's all the homes and stuff on there. There's, you know, there's not likely this is going to cause any d development in terms of additional homes beyond what we already put in there. But, you know, I just don't think that we have the authority to not ensure that that meets the standard if it's going to be used for frontage. Okay, what if they come to a point and say, Stem Turn Hill Road turns into a driveway? How do you mean? Well, yeah. well, you're, well you're, it, yeah. you're telling me that right now it's not designated as a private road in the town of Jackson in place in our records. So okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying well, that. I it, it seems that. I don't know. What it seems that way. That's that's what it, we're. It does. It does seem that way. It's, 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 it's not a private road. It, it, there's no designation on paper. There's no subdivision uh, from the '40s or '50s when they were doing this. Um, and again, I don't remember when no, Rodney Charles' house was built, which is one of the ones over to the west of the road. Um, but what if you went by those driveway, you know, accesses, and got down to what would be this lot? And I think then you would have to accommodate Peggy Frost's house. That would be two houses on a driveway. Well, if if stem turn is, is never designated, you know, as a private road, right? But we can't approve frontage on a driveway. And that's what this really well, would. Well, they can, but it's a. It's I, a I, I, I think what Dick's suggesting is is can we look at some subset of what is currently the driveway and consider that as a, as a private uh, way and look at that only? Is that what you're suggesting? Well, I'm just throwing out as a, as a, as an opportunity. There's enough uh, in the first 300 feet or the first 400 feet in this whole thing that I'm just trying to run through, you know, as many you, ideas as again, I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to find the same place you are. What's the sweet spot to make this happen? Yeah. 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 Actually, uh, Peggy Frost's old house is actually three driveways from off the beginning of that hers. The Frost log cabin and the Miller log cabin, they all use that same, you know, end of the road there. What do you think, guys? Well, I think what we need to do is decide what um, we're going to require to be able to approve this as a planning board. Exactly. Private road right of way. And I think the biggest question is what. And what, you know, is our road design and construction standards, is that the standard that we use to approve something in private road right away? Or is, you know, that's where I'm most unclear. So what is the standard that we're testing this against? And would the engineer know that? I think the engineer Burr would, would know what he's done before. He he's he's seen he's seen the 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 he and it, it, it seems to me that that we keep we keep moving the the line further down the road that they have to cross, and I don't think that that's fair. I think we should decide that um, either we have the engineer go look at it and make a determination, or we just you know uh, uh, approve as is. I would just agree that we move the line. We started where we said we need road frontage. No, we have. To, and we have, have said that we need to approve it, and we can only approve it through we should, we the should. town process that's approved by the town as to how we would approve what we said. What I'm saying is that in the, last, in the last meeting, we should have said we need the engineer in here to do that. We, we didn't say. We said what would be deferred to the town and asked that the selectmen please identify what their process would be. And that is exactly what we did, and that's exactly what we requested. I made a specific request of Dick, the first select person, to head that and to check with his appropriate departments to do that. But we still don't have that that line has as in this meeting move forward again. I can no, I just we did one point? I think we met. I, I think um, I might have the answer to all of this. Um, definition of the, the uh, zoning ordinance of a private road. 
means a highway, street, road, avenue, or way not open to public use as a matter of right for vehicular travel, the maintenance or repair of which shall be borne by the subdivider abutting landowners or an association of abutting landowners. So if we can decide that yes, that that stem town, stem turn road meets that definition of a private road, can you read that again, please? Is a highway, street, road, avenue, or way not open to the public use as a matter of right for vehicular travel, the maintenance and repair of which shall be borne by the subdivider, abutting landowners, or an association of abutting landowners? In other words, it's the town doesn't, isn't supposed to maintain it, the landowners it's up to them to maintain it, just like we all have to maintain our own driveways. And, um, and it is a way uh, for vehicular travel, not open to public use as a matter of right. So, so according to that, any driveway would it qualify? According to start, um, If it's not by custom being used for vehicular traffic, I, yeah. that sounds like that. I mean, that's already a huge can of worms. Yeah, I'm just reading, reading our, our materials. And we need to change the ordinance. We all know what the process is. So that would accept this as a, as a private, private room. room. And then we just have to make sure that it's got it meets the frontage requirements. So it does. And that's where the engineer comes in. No, no, no. no. The, the frontage is there. Is there. Right. Okay. It's long enough. Well, yeah. it's whether we accept it as a private road. Right. Yeah, I, I guess I would like to get some legal counsel on, on that. Because if, if we're saying that any way of travel that you can drive a vehicle on qualified for front is that, that you know we we grow a road we cause them to expend a large amount of money to put in a road of particular standards to qualify for front is. and we're now saying that a grass track you know qualifies as a private road that qualifies for front is that is a road I, I would respectfully point out again the um, <clears throat> the significant difference between Grover Road, which is 100% newly created road. Um, but, but again, this is a new subdivision, so I, I don't see that. Well, the road is in existence. The, the right of way is in existence. The new subdivision using the same term. Right. So, but it, one of the one of the uh, roadways that qualifies for frontage is a private road. And this meets, I mean, we, I, we just. Right, again, if we're using that as an argument to approve this, then the state is going to put in the you know, grass track and that would qualify as a private road and there's a, a way that suitable for vehicular traffic. I, I mean, the board can certainly do what the board wants to do, but I think that would be a... Okay, well, if we're going to have Bert come in, I would say that we'll um, incur that expense because we're asking for the opinion. Um, I, I hope. And I, I'm actually saying, I think based on what Sarah's pointing out, that we really need to see some legal counsel first to determine what is the standard that we should be using. The legal, we're, we're then determined whether that standard The engineer is knows yes. better than a lawyer what the legal... No, the lawyer can look at our regulations and say this is what But we also had the Hampshire Municipal Association look at this and say that as long as we agree that it's private pay, we're good to go. But that, that was for a building permit, which is different. That's, that's, that's for building, that's correct. Yes. So, uh, I, I just said we've, we've required a lot in the past in terms of frontage, in terms of, you know, what's qualified for frontage, what's the 
done has to do with established frontage, and I think. Because I'm going to ask Burr to decide at what point was it non conforming this roadway. Mm -hmm. Because I know it's a real good out here. Say it again. It's real good. Okay, you're coming off switchback. The first couple hundred feet. It's in yeah. real good shape. Yep. Yeah. And, I, and again, I, I don't see she, that if we were to approve this, I don't see that necessarily leading to problems with this particular piece of land. I'm more concerned with the issues that may lead the planning board to in further subdivisions. And if we, if we allow something that we haven't established according to some standard to serve the frontage, that really means that we will accept nearly anything for frontage. Um, it may be, I mean, we may um, want to have um, the things that we have looked at for this road is an emergency travel um, and uh, that it's used frequently by the uh, abutters to the road and so on, that it's more than a grass track. Mm -hmm. And it is a, a road that it is functioning as a road, not just a way. And that... Um, and it has functioned for however long through, and I don't know if there's a formal association. I don't know if there's uh, deeding, but through cooperation, they have kept that road in a passable situation. I, I think we can accept it myself, but that's just, you know, I, I because it, it's existing. That's what I keep, because I don't know that if it's not for some reason a part of it or all of it or isn't to a specification, where can we leverage all those homeowners to make it better? That I don't see. You know, I, I see what you're saying, Scott, that, that, that you know, maybe it's unclear that, that somebody could take the extension and make a cow path into frontage. But I don't think this is the case here. I, I think Dick is making the argument, which I agree with, that this is clearly an established private road. It's not a cow path. And I think a reasonable man or woman would, would accept 